Hello everyone, this is Wolfiganahu here. Welcome to the first episode of Let's Play Sly 3! Honor Alarm Thieves. In the last two Let's Plays, as you know, i done Sly Cooper and Thieves Raccoonus and Sly 2 Bands of Thieves. Now I've got one more in the trilogy now, Sly 3 Bands of Thieves. Well, of course, this ain't the last game in the series, but as you know, but... But we're not good. Yeah, yeah, but... Anyways! We'll do these entirely, okay? Okay. Let's get started with the third game franchise, Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. Huh, the Sucker Punch. Cutscene is anime this time. Neat. Okay, so... So let's see what's the where are we gonna be taking place this time? It is raining. That's the annoying car outside my house, cause of course it would be. Okay. So it's raining. We're on some sort of island. Well, yeah, the, the game can't tell me. Yeah, there's Sly Cooper. And there's some guards. And of course, Sly is doing what he does best: taking it outside secretly. One's gonna have the same bombastic flashy introduction like in the last game. No, it's subtle. I don't mind this. Sly Cooper, the TF. His tail is covering the word thief. Way to go, Sucker Punch. If that wasn't a wish game, then way to go, Sans Wu Games. But yep. Yeah. And here's a tile screen Sly 3 on on thieves. Now, in terms of this game, this game hasn't really changed much from slide 2. Basically, it's slide 2, but cut down a bit and, and spook it out a bit. Also, here's the new menu here. La la la, one usual things, and do you manage to notice that? There's no state. Yes, this game actually has a multiplayer mode. This is it, Sly. The gang's assembled and are in position to help you get up to that vault. For the rest of the operation, you are the ball. Roger, Bentley. I'm starting my approach. Getting over these fortress walls shouldn't be a problem. Look, we're running five by five here. Make sure everyone's in sync. I hear that. Artillery, sure you can make that shot? I endeavor not to miss. Excellent. Radio control. In position. Recovery team. Our pump. Submersible. Showtime, baby. Telekinetics. I gotta die. All right, it's the crime of the century and the ball's in motion. Okay. Who the heck are all those people? That will clear silhouette. And where's Moe? <sighs> Whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna spoil a bit, bit the game here. <laughs> well, but when you start off life free, and actually give you a sneak peek at, I guess the last episode of the game here. Cause yeah, we're racing here actually takes place at the end of the game. So yeah, this game is a flashback game. Guy with sword? Pfft, has to do it once. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna talk about it because it's basically saying I would have seen Saying about how to control slide, even though I know how to control slide, always talking about stuff. From so apparently, we got new teammates here. We don't know who they are, but that's what we're gonna find out through the joy of this game, guys. This is kind of a flashback game. Ball requesting door via Agent Monarch. Over. Launching. Stand clear. I've got 
Okay. Yeah, blah blah, we know this before. So. What? Where are we even breaking into? Well, besides the island itself. Can't get rid of that fan. Okay. Uh, get rid of these lasers for me, Bentley. Thank you. Okay, as you can see to your left, someone's actually taking. You see that to your left, someone's actually taking care of the. Very well, Doctor M. Ah, basically, you see to your left there, there's someone behind those transparent glass walls. Okay, yeah, so we're trying to break, get into a vault, and it's not a special kind of vault, it's the Cooper Vault, which Sly will explain in the first cutscene, so yeah. Now since we no longer have to deal with clockworks, I guess the next thing to do is, is to break into Sly Cooper's family vault. And of course I'll be nervous and hey, look what returns with Sly 1. <laughs> And immediately it's not on a vault, it's just a scrolling thing itself, so yay, no more pin locks. So, you mean bolts and clue bars return, right? Well, um, I'll get to you later. Huh, the king is the key. That's neat. It's opening! Oh! What could be inside? Ah, crap. Knew it. This vault belongs to the Cooper family. You're trespassing. No, my naive boy, you're trespassing. I've got the deed to this island. This fortress is mine. Everything here is mine, which now includes the key to the vault. Hand over that key. Sorry, pal. Family heirloom. Buy a knockoff at the gift shop. Quick, let's regroup with the others. Follow me. Okay, yeah, so here's the main villain of this game. Along the same lines as Clockworks and Neela. This is Dr. M. We'll get a big big idea of who he is in the last episode of this game. <laughs> but for now we need to make an escape as we usually do. Uh, yes, and since Bentley's paralyzed, he's in a wheelchair now, so God bless his soul. <laughs> Don't worry, you can still play as Bentley, you know he's in a wheelchair. We are almost home free. The boat's just up ahead. There's no escape, Koopa. No, Bentley! Let him go! So we're in the wheelchair, jeez. So I guess here's our first boss. Nah, it's more of a tutorial boss. You don't have to. You don't have to defeat this guy. There we go. That's what we gotta do. Save yourself. If he wants to eat, eat this.
It was like they always say, your life really does flash before your eyes. There it all was, stretching back to my childhood. Born into a family of master thieves that went back for generations, I was next in line to continue the Cooper name. But fate had different plans. I was robbed of my childhood when a ruthless gang attacked our home. The orphanage I landed in wasn't all bad. It was there that I met my lifelong friends. Bentley, he's always been the thinker. And Murray, he's the doer. We'd stuck together over the years, and our skill, our confidence, and our thieving reputation grew stronger with each heist. We thought that the good times would never end, and that our luck would never run out. Which only made things tougher when the odds finally caught up with us. Then I met this guy, McSweeney, who claimed to have run with my father's crew back in their heyday. They pulled jobs all over the world and amassed quite a collection of priceless items. It was then that McSweeney told me all about the Cooper Vault. It seemed that my father, like all my ancestors, had been hiding their wealth in a secret place for generations, each one adding to the treasure hidden behind a door that if McSweeney's story is true, only a Cooper can open. Using some well-placed clues provided by McSweeney, we set out for the secret island that held the vault. On arriving, we discovered someone by the name of Dr. M had already set up shop. From the looks of it, he'd been trying to crack the thing for years, growing steadily more frustrated in his failures and more paranoid as the decades rolled by. He built himself a fortress with security as tight as Fort Knox. Getting inside the place would take precision, creativity, and moreover, it would take an army of world-class thieves. Finding and bringing together that much talent won't be easy, but to get inside the Cooper vault and collect my inheritance, I was willing to pay the price. Okay, slavery, honor alone thieves. Gotta go to saying that now. So have bands of thieves, it's honor alone thieves. There you go, here's the, yes we know, blah blah blah. So, yeah, we got basic plot synopsis from good old Sly Cooper. Here's the usual episode menu. Because, yeah, this game is very similar to Sly 2. This game was released only a year after Sly 2. It basically kind of feels the same as the last game. Because, yeah, that was just a prelude. This game is a flashback game, so all the episodes we're going to play is going to lead up to the prelude. Pretty odd joys, I might say. Yeah, also this is where the bonus duties are. And also, you can replay jobs! Which you can do in a nice game. Huzzah! So... Let's head to the hazard room first. If we're gonna make it to the Cooper Vault, we'll need to perfect our thieving skills. I've rigged this place to push us to our limits. I'm guessing these levers start the different trainers. That's right. Each will initiate a streamlined crash course in grand larceny. I'll head for the control room, and we'll get things started. Dish it out. I'm ready. Okay, this isn't we really the first episode. As much as this is a tutorial room. Yep, this game has tutorials. Okay, all great thieves have one thing in common. A ton of cash? No, they never get lost. Use the right analog stick to look around the hazard room. Try to find the Cooper gang marker I'm projecting. Yes, this game has tutorials. Great. Now press down on the L3 button to ping a waypoint. That's handy. I agree. These holographic markers are an invaluable tool for finding your way around in the field. Notice how the logo moves to the destination? Try clicking the L3 button a few more times to get the hang of it. Okay, head for the waypoint. Okay, so this is Sony Wins Life 3. You can click the L3 button, and a little circle will 
point you in the general vicinity of where the waypoint is. A definitely improved on slide two, that's for sure. Provided he doesn't break his neck getting up there. Not a problem for a man with your jumping skills. Hit the X button for a standard jump. Then hit the X button a second time while in the air for an extra high double jump. Yes, this is sound noise, so yeah. Alright, Bentley. What's next? As you know, it's very useful to survey guards from the rooftops. To do that, we'll have to be able to look down at them. Let me guess. Use the right analog stick? Yep. Try to find the marker I <laughs> Yes, we get it, Bentley. Excellent. Now look up at that pillar. I'm projecting another marker. Can I please talk? Oh, it's going a lot of challenges toys, isn't there? Now put all these skills to use and get to the remaining waypoints. Should be easy if you ping them with the L3 button and look around. Okay, fine, I got some time to talk. Yeah, tutorials! Sly 1 and 2 didn't have tutorials, but Sly 3. Nice one. But it's the third game in the, in the series, and now it feels the need to shove tutorials down a throat. <laughs> Why? Sly 1 and 2 did it just as fine. And job complete. Hey, <laughs> Fraser, why? Why does this game need tutorials? Sly 1 2 did just fine without them. You picked up a lot of skills after reading the previous raccoon. Heck of a page turner, that book. Let's see if you remember them all. Check out those small points on that wire. You can land on them light as a feather using your ninja spire jump. Easy. I just jump and hit the circle button. Exactly. Try getting over to the other platform. And it's fine if Sly 3 is the first game, but. But like me, who already played the first two, this is pointless. Yeah, and done this one before. I mean, what's wrong with just normally playing game and learning as you go? Now some notification through. Why do we need to do all this? This is completely pointless. Nice job, Sly. You're a credit to the Cooper name. Yeah, yeah. Also, that humming is annoying. <sighs> yeah. We're also, all in here. Let's head outside and get I mean, yeah. Also. I mean, all the toys are handfully optional except for those first two for some stupid reason. But yeah, they decided to add tutorials. You know, the first two games didn't have tutorials. What was wrong with just learning and play. learn how to play as you go along? What's wrong with just no vacations? Whatever, we got cuts cutscene coming up. Getting inside a world class vault would take a team of world class thieves. A group of specialists, each member contributing their own particular talent. It was clear that we needed Murray back. Not only was I missing a lifelong friend, but his brute strength helped get us out of more than a few scrapes in the past. When Bentley was injured during the whole clockwork affair, Murray blamed himself, eventually leaving the team. We tried to console him, but going out on his own was something he needed to do. He said he wanted to find his spiritual center. We got word that Murray ended up in the Australian Outback, where he studied a mystic art called the Dream Time from an Aboriginal guru. From all accounts, things went pretty well, and his teacher even sent him on a walkabout to locations all over the globe to complete the training. Latest reports have cited Murray in beautiful Venice, Italy, but what he's doing there is a mystery. I just hope he steers clear of the local mob boss, Octavio. Growing up, this guy used to be a real celebrity in the neighborhood. Everyone loved to hear him sing opera and said he was destined to be the next great tenor. But just as his career started to take off, musical tastes changed. Suddenly, it was all about rock music, and no one wanted to listen to opera anymore. He held on to a few fans, and it was these mobsters that took him into the business. 
Heading onto this guy's turf was dangerous, but worth it for a chance to make things right with Murray. Okay, so here we go. We got our first villain, DG Octavio. I mean, just Octavio. And an opera of fear. <laughs> so we need. So the main thing in this game is that we need to recruit more team members into our gang, including game at Murray, because hard events slide to Murray feels really bad about basically paralyzing Mur. <laughs> no, paralyzing Bentley as the clockwork has slammed on him for his fault, even though it isn't. It was or less commas, I don't know. And so he left the team and now he's looking for well peace. Peace I guess. Eh you know what you know what I mean, but yeah. So here we go, first episode of six. S still w one more than slide one, but technically it's much less than slide two. And I'll do be fooled. Well, this game does have longer jobs than the second game. Yep, three nights back, the safe house is back. Yep, this is basically just slide 2.5 really. But next time, let's play slide 3 on Alarm Thieves. We shall properly get started here. So it's Warwick and Who, and I'll see you next time. Later, people.